it was an absolutely absurd conclusion to the 2023 regular season in the Big 12, and that is exactly how we like it. This is Locked On Big 12. You are Locked On Big 12, your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy, all right now, it's Saturday, everybody, and welcome to Locked On Big 12. I'm Drake Toll from ESPN Central Texas. Thank you for making Locked On Big 12 your first listen every single day. Let's break it all down. The Big 12 conference comes to a conclusion. It's regular season tonight in wild fashion. Talking Iowa State with the finish at the buzzer against Kansas State where Will Howard just can't get it done at the very end or can't pull it off. And, and, and the Iowa State offense had, what, like three plays in Kansas State territory all night? I've talked all year about Colin Klein and do you make a change there? You don't make a change, but at the same time, you want it to be better in big game scenarios and key situations down the stretch. Now Kansas State, a team that I thought would be in the Big 12 championship, the number 19 team in the country, falls to 8-4. and four. Losing to Iowa State, who's now six and three in Big Twelve play, and they get their fourth straight road win. And uh, I, who thought Abu Sama would be the guy that I'm talking about in Week 13 at the conclusion of the Big Twelve season, 42 to 35, Iowa State on top of Kansas State. We'll dig deeper into that one. How about Oklahoma State or BYU? This is one where I. Uh, there, there are two sides to this conversation. On the one end, you think, all right, BYU, here is your shot to go out there and find a way to be bowl eligible in your first year. You erase all the struggles early on or you erase the, the recent struggles. You bring back that early success and you finish it out well. 24, you're up by 18 points and you do the most admirable thing possible for the Big 12 Conference. You fall apart at the very end to give Oklahoma State the win, and now the Cowboys under Mike Gundy are going to the Big 12 Championship in search of their first Big 12 Championship game victory, facing the Texas Longhorns, who are in search of their first Big 12 Championship game victory. That came on Saturday, too. I'm sure we're seeing early spreads already. will likely be in the double digits because of the way Oklahoma State has kind of limped to this point. I mean, a, a dominating enough win last week, then this week you have to come back late to be able to beat BYU, who finishes at 5-7, and seven, has a very disappointing end and final stretch in Big 12 play. Then you parlay that with the UCF loss a couple of weeks ago that was so dominant, and I'm sure everybody, everybody thinks that Texas is going to win, and I'm sure, I'm sure they're right. But I'm going to give you some reasons in the middle segment of why Oklahoma State could pull an upset on Saturday. Then you think about UCF in Houston, 27-13. You end the Cougars' season. They were, they were up at the end of the first quarter. You end their season at 4-8 and eight overall. West Virginia, and, and should mention, UCF now bowl eligible because of that win, 3-6 and six in Big 12 play. Took care of business outside of Big 12 play as well. UCF, a good year based on the hand they were dealt with injuries for the Knights and Coach Gus Malzahn. Then there's West Virginia Baylor. And what a, the most Big 12 finish ever. I mean, a perfect way to almost cap the night as the Iowa State Farmageddon game, Kansas State Farmageddon game, wrap this up this evening. That was the epitome of what this year has been for Dave Aranda. In the third segment of this show, I'm going to talk to you about guys that will likely lose their job on Monday. There will be teams, there will be organizations, uh, athletic departments that call that emergency meeting on Monday, maybe even Sunday, and that's where you learn that so-and-so's time at your university is done, and it could be the case for Dave Aranda. I, I posed the question before the game, if Baylor loses this one by 30, you probably fire Dave Aranda, but you might be even more upset with Aranda and company if they lose it on a Hail Mary. That's kind of what happened. The defense is pitching a shutout in the second half, and then here comes Garrett Green. Jaheim White has been so good, too, at 133 yards on the ground. I didn't think that West Virginia would rely on the aerial attack as much as they did. I didn't think that Garrett Green would throw for over 250 yards, but in the end, that's what wins you the game. He has shown you, similar to that Houston game, that he can go down and get it done when you need it late. He does it here, and instead of a Hail Mary walk-off like Houston had, Baylor falls 34-31, and West Virginia. We're talking madness. West Virginia finishes 8-4. and four. Now you have 8-4 and four Kansas State, 8-4 and four West Virginia, 
eight and four Kansas. You've got a lot of teams sitting in that middle ground that shows to me the depth of the Big 12 conference. That's a West Virginia team. I had projected at one and 11. I more than eat crow at this point. I believe my exact words at the beginning of the season were, if West Virginia goes to a bowl, I will take my bare hands, claw out my left hamstring, eat it raw on a live stream. I I think those are my words. It won't be this live stream. But West Virginia, under Neil Brown, what they have put together is the biggest surprise of the Big 12 this year. That's the biggest surprise in the Big 12. It's, It's not the lack of success from Baylor. It's not the fact that UCF's going bowling. It's not the fall apart from BYU. It's it's not even though Oklahoma State is in the Big 12 championship. It's the fact that West Virginia went eight and four under Neil Brown this year and completely turned the ship around and bought him time. He said to Dave Aranda after his game was over, Dave, I'm so sorry that sucked. Uh, I just went through that. You know, Dave Aranda's feeling the pressure. Neil Brown said to him, we just went through that. Uh, I I promise you're going to be happy on the other side of this. We'll see if Dave Aranda comes out on the other side. Kansas 49, Cincinnati 16. There will be a conversation early next year about Scott Satterfield. It's his first year. We can't kill him with rocks. We can't freak out yet-ish. But it at one and eight in Big 12 play, three and nine, when you're looking at BYU and, and Houston and UCF, who all picked up a couple of Big 12 wins, and you got shellacked what felt like week in a week out for Cincinnati, who lost 49 16 to Kansas. There's a conversation about Scott Satterfield soon, not this offseason, but next offseason for sure. For Kansas, Lance Leipold, it, it now becomes locking him down. There are teams that are going to call. Michigan State just got filled by Jonathan Smith. That's huge. Leipold obviously not going to fill the the vacancy at Oregon State, but we're going to learn in the next 24 hours or so what other universities come open by virtue of their coaches leaving. So if a Ryan Day leaves Ohio State to go to a whoever, a Texas A&M, which at this point looks like is wrapped up with Mark Stoops, then does Lance Leipold get some offer in the Midwest or at Ohio State or in the Big Ten? And does he leave Kansas? In my opinion, no. Not after what he's already built. After the new, They've already announced new plans for a stadium, which is going to be a little bit. But Leipold's got something going so well at KU and in Lawrence. I think he stays put, at least for now. And then last night's games, or a couple nights ago, if you listen to this tomorrow, which none of that made sense, but bear with me. Texas. 57-7 to seven over Texas Tech with the entire conference watching, with the entire country, the, the whole commissioner rooting for Texas Tech to win. They lose by 50 points at 10-7 to seven in the first quarter. I'm thinking, okay, okay, there's a chance. There's a chance. And, and then there was. I, I still don't think that Quinn Ewers, he's not the best quarterback in the conference. Dylan Gabriel is. And I, he, is a, he throws a beautiful slant route. He throws a beautiful slant route. But I'm going to need... <laughs> They're going to need a little bit more out of him in the Big 12 championship game. He's probably going to deliver it. He's only needed to throw a slant route so far this season, the way Texas has manhandled most of the teams they played. And in this game, it wasn't even Quinn Ewers that won it for Texas. You establish the ground game, and more than anything, you establish the defense. You stop the run attack of Texas Tech. You force Baron Morton to throw, which is not something he does at an elite level. And Texas, by halftime, the game was over, and they put a little bit extra for good measure. 31 nothing, pitching a shutout in the second half, 57-7. to And then TCU pulled kind of the same thing as the Texas Tech. You have a chance. You have a chance to get bowl eligible here. We just need a little bit of defense. And the defense didn't show up. And I've been begging them to fire Kendall Bryles, the guy with the last name Bryles. And, and, and nope, they didn't. And then Oklahoma, I've been begging them to fire Jeff Levy. Nope, they didn't. And then they put up 69 points. TCU puts up 45 points at a massive shootout. So I guess you get to keep both your offensive coordinators unless Jeff Levy goes to Mississippi State and unless Kendall Bryles goes elsewhere, who I still think should probably be out at TCU. What a week, right? What a week in the Big 12. Coming up, Texas, Oklahoma State, they're headed to Arlington. Is there any way, is there any way the Cowboys can get an upset? This is Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by listening.com. Listening.com is the app that I go to that turns academic papers, textbooks, PDFs, websites, and emails into audio. So you can listen to them on the go. You're on the move. I'm on the move. When I, I, let's get a little personal here. When I'm in the shower, I like to listen to music or like audiobooks or stuff. I don't, yeah, I don't have a lot of time. I don't want to sit down and read. Just read it to me. Listening.com does that. It's the best app in the world for listening to academic material or just random stuff. One note taking, 
one click note taking. You just click, boom, nope, it's in. It's in. You take a note of what you just heard. Bam. Automatic chapter detection, data tables, pull them. You can review them. You see the visual side and the audio side at listening.com. 50% of users are PhDs, 30% college students, 20% working professionals. Right now, listening.com gets an extra week free. My listeners, if you're listening, get an extra week free. Three-week trial for you. It's usually two, but three weeks for you at link listening.com forward slash locked on listening.com forward slash locked on. I'll give you extra free week free. Go check them out. Listening.com. It is Texas and Oklahoma state in the big 12 championship game. If you're listening live, this is the first edition of a Saturday recap that is live on the locked on big 12 YouTube channel. You could be listening to this afterwards as well, both in podcast form or on YouTube. Texas, Oklahoma State, who wins the ball game? Let's be very, very clear here. Not only should Texas win this game, they should win this game by 14 million points. It, it, sh- it shouldn't be close because the Texas run defense is so stout that you force a quarterback to throw. What did we just see from Baron Morton, who I think is a more dynamic quarterback than Alan Bowman who can do more than Alan Bowman. We just watched Baron Morton completely crap the bed against the University of Texas Longhorns. And for Alan Bowman, he's a guy that is not going to run the football. Get ready for this. Alan Bowman's last four games. Five, I'll give you five. Five games rushing. <clears throat> against BYU, three carries, negative 10 yards. Remember, sack supply. Houston, no carries, no yards, which is a bright spot here. Against UCF, two carries, negative 10 yards. Against Oklahoma, one carry for 13 yards, career day. And against Cincinnati, two carries for nine yards. Alan Bowman is not going to leave the pocket. Texas is going to stop the run game. Texas is going to stop Ollie Gordon. He is the most electric back in the Big 12. Five rushing touchdowns against BYU. He may still go for 150 yards in this game, and it might not matter because the Texas defense is going to limit the rest of everybody. They're going to limit Alan Bowman because he, he already can't run. And when you're not dynamic enough to get somebody else involved heavily in the run game like your quarterback, that's when the Longhorns can expose you. And, and while their pass defense is susceptible, Rocco Bechtad, well, I think like 330 yards passing against Texas or pushing 350, while that's you're susceptible there, I don't think that Alan Bowman can have the kind of performance that Rocco Beck did against Texas and lead Oklahoma State to a win. But if he does, <laughs> and, and that's that's kind of what I'm leaning on here. If he does, how great, how great would it be? There are no stakes for Oklahoma State. We can create stakes of, oh, you know, this could help this out. It could establish you as one of the big players in the future Big 12. For Oklahoma State in the Big 12 championship, this could give you a leg up moving forward in recruiting. And you show, hey, we can be the kings of this conference. We have the longest tenured head coach in Mike Gundy. He gets his first Big 12 championship game win. But, <laughs> but really the glory is in beating Texas. That, that's where the stakes are. For, for UT, they've gone 15 years since winning a Big 12 championship. That's a long stretch for a university that wants you to think they are the best team in this league. We went to a round-robin format. We went into a, hey, there are no easy schedules. It's not, you know, this team got lucky or Texas got an easy schedule or somebody else got an easy schedule. It's, a, it's been a round-robin format for the last decade. And still, Texas couldn't do anything. Now, they're in the top seven in the country. They'll be top... They'll, they'll be in the conversation, obviously, for the college football playoff. They have a road win against Alabama. That, that Oklahoma loss, up there, that's, that's the singer keeping them squarely out of the college football playoff right now. But with a win against Oklahoma State, especially in dominant fashion, they make a strong case if a couple of the right pieces fall to, to do it, to go to the Final Four here. That, that's huge. For one university... You're playing for a national championship. This is a play-in for the college football playoff. For another, you get to be the ultimate spoiler. That's what Oklahoma State gets to play. Mike Gundy's team was, what, four or five inches away from a Big 12 championship in 2021. There are still enough of those guys, some of those guys that are hanging around this program from that era that can describe the pain felt when Baylor didn't have a quarterback in the second half of that game and still... Still, 
Oklahoma State went out there and found a way to lose. They lost to South Alabama. I'm going to keep bringing it up because it shows you where they came from this season. Winning the Big 12 championship puts you in a great position, but all the pressure in the world is on Texas. And now this game is going to be decided in the trenches. Ollie Gordon the second. He is going to have to be lights out. And I, I told you he might get 150, and that, that's Texas containing him because it's what he does. He needs to have 200-plus rushing yards. And Alan Bowman has to be the perfect complement through the air. Where Texas lacks right now, where Texas lacks is their secondary, which isn't a bad secondary. It's just the least elite part of their team, if you're picking up what I'm saying here. Their defensive front, their interior especially, is unbelievable. It's stupid, stupid good. They hold opponents to 85 rushing yards per game. Uh, That is good enough for third in the nation. What does Oklahoma State want to do? They want to run the football. Now look, remember that Oklahoma State game last year? That one is still on a final score, 41-34. to 34. I have the box score pulled up right in front of me because that's what I'm going to reference a whole lot this week. That felt like a game Oklahoma State should not have been in. Little did they do, well, little you know, they're going to come back and win. It was Quinn Ewers, kind of crapped himself and said, you know what? Uh, I'm not, I don't know if I'm ready for all this madness. Goes into Stillwater and loses. I don't believe Oklahoma State had any business winning that game against a Texas team that had those kind of slip-ups last year. They've been much more consistent this year, but I just need them for one week to not be consistent. And if you're a Texas fan or somebody who's a... If you're for some reason a Big 12 fan or a fan of another Big 12 team and you have a soft spot for Texas, I'm sorry you're going to think, oh, this guy, Texas lives in this guy's rent, head rent-free. Yes, 100%. I mean, why wouldn't they? They're leaving our conference. On paper, in actuality... The way Texas has played, I can almost guarantee you, UT will win against Oklahoma State by 17 or more points. But let's hold on to hope. I'm going to keep giving you hope over the course of the rest of this week. There are some guys in this league that do not have hope. The college coaching carousel is upon us. Who is going to lose their job? Because... There's there are a couple in the Big 12 we need to have a conversation about. This is Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is where I go to make money. I consider it my passive income. FanDuel.com forward slash locked on is where you need to go to make money as well. I, look, I, I go in, I say, hey, FanDuel. I don't think that Kansas State's going to beat Iowa State by 10. And that's when I throw $50 or $10 or $20 on Iowa State to cover 10. Then they win it outright. Feels good for me, right? Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. You go in. You put five bucks on Texas or Oklahoma State to win this week, and you get 150 bucks in free play. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action than right now. The app is easy to use. Spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Go to FanDuel.com, FanDuel.com forward slash locked on. All right. Who is going to lose their job? Today or or tomorrow or within the next 72 hours as the coaching carousel escalates. I want to preface this conversation by saying I do not take glory in the fact that I get to sit in my comfy big chair and tell you who's going to get fired. I don't take comfort in the fact that these people have families. They're real human beings. They probably listen to, to they, they listen to podcasts and take in articles and hell, they're not listening to this one, but I, I know they hear the noise. And I know the toll that must take on your mental health, but there are coaches, not just in this league, but across the entire country, they're going to learn in the next 72 hours, their job is done. They they don't have a job anymore. And a big part of that is that they didn't fulfill their position. They didn't, these guys are making $10,000 a day. That's like the minimum right now, $10,000 a day to go lose football games, which I'm sure you'd be able to do as well. For me, if I sit in my fancy podcast chair and I go six months, a year, two years where I can't answer questions of why I'm not performing, of why my ratings are bad, or why I'm not doing shows or why I keep losing or why nobody's listening. If that's the case for me, then I get fired. If you stop making sales, you get fired. Now, do people talk about it publicly? No. But when you're in the limelight, when you make $10,000 a day, this is part of what you signed up for. You signed up to fulfill your contract and do your job. And guess what? If you do get fired, you're getting a big fat payday. You're going to be just fine. 
I, I, that, that side of this, I have no remorse in the conversation for. And I do believe time is up for at least two Big 12 head coaches. There is no way you can bring Dave Aranda back to Baylor. There is no way you can bring a coach who went three and nine this season after two years removed from a Big 12 championship and Sugar Bowl with another guy's players that you didn't capitalize on. The big reason why for Aranda, by the way, is that he's already replaced an offensive coordinator and a defensive coordinator in his tenure. You can't fire the offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator that you hired after you already fired your offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator just to rehire or or hire another. Like, oh, uh, well, it's not my fault as the head coach. It's these assistants that I, the head coach hired um, because I fired the other ones. Can't do that. Once you've already, we've already been through the song and dance of, oh, the assistants aren't working. We're going to make a change. That's not going to work like that. Dave Aranda, your time is up. I went to his press conference and he said, yeah, yeah, disappointed in the loss, but uh, great for, I feel like we're very impressed with the effort uh, and how our guys fought hard. It's like, oh, wow, you said that last week and the week before that. I, I also think a guy like Dana Holgerson, how do you hold on? And I know Houston was going to struggle and you keep hearing Holgerson come to the podium and say, hey, you know, this is kind of, you take your lumps your first year. There have been a couple times where he's been asked a question. It just feels like he's, you know, hand up. I don't know. Like Dana, how do you how are you going to recruit? How are you going to fix NIL? How are you going to put butts in the seats? People aren't showing up. People don't care about Houston football right now. How are you going to fix it? And it seems like he's like, I, I don't know. And there have been more bright spots for Houston this year than Baylor. But at the same time, I don't think those bright spots are bright enough to overshadow the four eight campaign that Dana Holgerson and company just put together. To me, if you go to coachinghotseat.com, which is where I go, I check it every three days from the start to the end of the season, because I'm so fascinated with a guy like Bush Jones, who was number one on there, and it's now not even on the list at Arkansas State because he took him to a bowl game. I love to see the development of this list. Lincoln Riley's the current number one, by the way. Love that. As to know, all the OU fans love that. Dave Aranda's in the top five. Daniel Holgerson's at number seven. They're the only two Big 12 guys that are on the list. For Aranda, I'm in the press conference, and one of the first things that happens after Aranda gets off the podium is the athletic director, Mac Rhodes, who had been referenced multiple times in Dave Aranda's press conference, walks straight to the university president. They have a little conversation. She nods and goes, oh, yep, okay. Which, to me, was probably, hey, let's meet in the next couple of days. I don't think Dave Aranda is still the Baylor head coach in the next 72 hours. Now, me, I let go of the guy. Mac Rhodes and the Baylor administration, I don't know. I can't, I can't speak for them. I think there's still a 70% chance. 70% chance they retain him because the buyout's big. Schools like A&M are hunting, and it's just, it's a culture thing. They think that that's the culture fit. You're going to you're gonna suffer. You're going to take losses for your culture fit. For Houston and Dana Holgerson, the question's going, going to become, who can we go get? Is there somebody out there that we feel confident in that we're not going to lose to Baylor, that we're not going to lose to to A&M, that if Mississippi State's not filled up by Jeff Levy or somebody else, who, could, could we pick up a candidate that is high quality, Maybe, maybe doesn't need he doesn't need the pedigree of a Jeff Trailer. Even he could be a GJ Kenny at Texas State. I think a guy like that goes to Houston and wins immediately. I think he wins immediately. It's just a matter of the, if the Cougars and their administration feel like they can land that character. If that's the case, if they can make a phone call and GJ Kenny says, "Yeah, yeah, sure, I'm in." Bam. Dana Holgerson's done. The trajectory's not there. That's the big thing with this: is where is the where is the program headed? For Baylor, it's not in a good spot, and I don't see it getting any better. For Houston, it's not in a good spot, and I I don't think I see it getting any better. In the next 72 hours, we're going to see Dana Holgerson and Dave Aranda fired. You you at least should. I think you should. Again, I don't take any glory in saying that, but when you don't do your job, something has to give with these guys, and they haven't been doing their job at the level of a coach that can retain it in the Big 12. So, I, where we sit right now, what a wild way to close it out. BYU, just win the ball game. Go to a bowl. Thank you for losing so we didn't get a Red River rematch. That was very kind of you. For Oklahoma State, are you fraudulent? I mean, you made it to this point. Don't crap the bet against Texas. For Texas, you're the best team in the Big 12. For Iowa State, going on the road, getting an impressive snowy win against Kansas State, spectacular. For Cincinnati, what are we going to do with you? For Kansas, you're still being overlooked because you lost some of the key games, but what an impressive conclusion of the season. And for TCU, who do we fire? It's got to be one of the coordinators has to go. Somebody has to go. At Oklahoma, you're going to look back and say, we did all that 
oh, Oklahoma. You can look back and say, we did all that for what? We did all that effort and all that winning this season. And what do we get from it? The Alamo Bowl? Yeah. Sounds like it might be that. Yikes. This has been, it always will be. Hey, we'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll do a little bit more. Yeah. What do you say? Uh, you, go, you can listen to the show on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and all that stuff, too. I love you guys. Good to talk to you. First live recap. If you're listening live, thanks for being here. This has been It Always Will Be. Locked on. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. It's the Dose Grande.